Welcome to Viewpoint on Ukraine Today, where we are joined by Oleg Rybachuk, the founder and chief of NGO Center UA, and formerly the head of the presidential administration under former Ukrainian president Viktor Yushchenko. Mr. Rybachuk, thank you very much for joining us today. A pleasure. My first time, and I really am anxious. Well, on the 25th of October, Ukrainians went to the polls. I understand you were overseeing the elections in the run-up to them. What can you say about them? Would you say they were a success? Well, I would, I would agree with my president who said that this is like the last step in resetting uh, power. But what people demanded on Euromaidan was not changing faces in that system of power, but changing the system itself. Mm -hmm. So this didn't happen. What we saw, we saw appearance of new faces, lots of new brands, but basically it is missing the expectations of people. So the system, you would say, is still much the same as it was before Euromaidan? Right. The, we, the system where there is the supremacy of power instead of rule of law. Mm -hmm. So many experts, European leaders, American leaders, have said there is no rule of law in Ukraine. Is that something you would agree with? Absolutely, that's what I'm saying, that we have the rule of power at large. Names are changing mm -hmm. with every new president, but the basic system of that rule of power is that the entities, bodies which are supposed to control or to fight corruption, depend on politicians where mostly corruption is happening. And in, in the Western world, that is strictly divided. We don't have in the West uh, dependent uh, controlling or uh, monitoring functions of law enforcement, like Office of Attorney General or Financial Police. In Ukraine, it depends either on president or government or parliament. And the most well, the most massive corruption is there where, where top politicians are gathering. So that is the major problem of this system and this is something which we must change. So at the in the local elections, there was a turnout of 46.6%, which... That is, not, yeah, that's average, yeah, in um, different regions, differently, but average, yes. So for local elections, some would argue this was quite high. Um, so would you say people in Ukraine are again demanding change, but they are being, this is being rejected? People in Ukraine, well, probably well, if, if you are Ukrainian, you would say this turnover is low because Ukrainians are so much interested and eager to vote that usually the turnover is 60, 70, sometimes even higher. So at one hand, you can say that per international standards, it's low, but uh, it's high, but for Ukrainians, it's really low. Ukrainians have been confused. The law itself was voted recently and rules of the game were not clear. There were too many parties and too many unknown entities, like 140-something parties, just 20 actively campaigned, but still it's too much. OK, so you would say that voters were confused in the run Voters the were elections. confused, and despite of the fact that there are so many brands and names, voters were saying that they do not clearly see something which is qualitatively different. Mm -hmm. They need honest, uh, convincing trustworthy politicians, and this is what they are not seeing. So why can the political par parties not make it simple for make the, their information digestible so that the people of Ukraine can understand who they should vote for and who will provide them what they want? Well, good question, and the answer is because at the very top we have the guys who are not eager or happy to bring real competition there. So we clearly saw in the way this law was drafted that all parties which are sitting in the parliament uh, were defending their positions by having high barrier, by de introducing the law many restrictive measures which do not allow young uh, politicians to be at equal, uh, to be able to compete with them equally. Plus, we don't have, we only recently voted for the law on government financing of, 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 of parties, mm -hmm. plus the biggest uh, uh, outrageous situation is with so-called political uh, advertisement, because the big guys with big money, they own TV, and they have many of parties and 
what you see in Ukrainian TV during campaign is more brainwashing than actually competition of different political ideas. So it's not, it's, it's more than propaganda, it's really manipulation and brainwashing. So you would say there is no real competition? Yeah, it, it, it's important. If I, it, let, let's imagine we would like to go, we are honest, we, we know what to do, we are young, not corrupted. It would be almost impossible for us to come over these barriers under the present rules. No money, no access to media, well, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So you say that the people in power are, are controlling, are continuing to control the country as they always have in these elections, for example. Can you see this changing in the future? Yeah, I, obviously, that, that old system, it's on decline. It's on retreat. Slowly. Uh, slowly, maybe much slower than people wanted to. Mm -hmm. But what changes, really, Ukraine, it's people. So the, the old tricks, which have been quite effectively uh, used by previous, by same guys like previously, now they are meeting resistance. Now it's very, it, it becomes more and more difficult for the, this system to uh, convince the people that they are doing reforms or uh, it's much more difficult for them to manipulate. So politicians didn't change, but people have changed, which makes uh, unchanged politicians' life really difficult. So international organizations like the OSCE, they monitored the elections and they said, on the whole, they comply with international standards. However, there were some discrepancies here and there. You said just a few moments ago that there is no rule of law in Ukraine. So can, how can people resolve such, or how, how can electoral disputes be adjudicated in a country where there is no rule of law? Uh, perfect point. Uh, let, let's, let's divide, let's say, we don't have an uh, uh, independent court system, right? So if you have a dispute, you must appeal to the court. At the present, unreformed court is just a bad joke, and people know that. So we must do that. And again, there is a positive thing. The draft of the law is already waiting in the parliament, which is meeting international standards, etc. So there are lots of things happening, like uh, reform of the prosecutor's office, anti-corruption, prosecutor. President today said, or yesterday said, that it would be, the name would be there by the end of this month. But it's not only about the name. Will that body, would the prosecutor's office or would the uh, judges in the courts be independent of political pressures? This is something which we are driving to. But the, as you said, these reforms are happening much, much slower than expected. So what is the timeline on this? Well, here, here they, they are happening much less, but they are happening be, not because my government or top Ukrainian politicians are really uh, leading these reforms or leading the process, but because there is enormous pressure. There is enormous pressure coming from the people mm -hmm. and there is big pressure and constructive pressure c coming from our financial donors. And because I was, when I joined, when I came to independent Ukraine, I was involved in Ukraine, joining IMF, World Bank, EBRD, so I know perfectly well what I am talking about. So if you would ask any Ukrainian uh, uh, expert, he will tell you that if something must be done, it must be part of like IMF agreement. It's kind of uh, humiliating for Ukrainian politicians, but that external pressure or the coordination of public opinion in Ukraine expert opinion of, of, of Ukraine and external pressure, which is now well coordinated. I see very well, very high coordination between international financial institutions and European Parliament and even US. So that means that Ukrainian government, even if they are very much reluctant, have no choice but to, 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 to do reforms. But and there are, and there are time, 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 uh, there are benchmarks. For example, uh, uh, there was a very clear message from EU. If there is no anti-corruption uh, office uh, enacted by the end of this month, uh, there will be no, uh, there would be, like, let, let's say, no visa uh, regime. The, 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 like, the free European yeah, visa for yeah, Ukrainians. Yeah, free, free European, mm -hmm. uh, free, 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 free travel for Ukrainians or no visa for short-term uh, so travel for Ukrainians. Yeah. Europe, yes. By the ninth, just, just within one week, if my parliament, which is meeting this week, will fail to vote for nine anti-corruption laws, this, this, this perspective is gone. President was yesterday pulling among this. So this is how it works. You have clear benchmarks with time indicated what must be done, and my government reluctantly is doing that.
So, so the government is reluctant, but you see the only way they're actually going to change is if yeah, because the they totally pressure. depend on external finance. Mm -hmm. And and again, but it, if that would be only external finance, only external pressure, that would be ridiculous. But that is demanded by broad public in Ukraine. Okay, so the West is effectively forcing the hand off Ukraine. Yeah, the West, in combination with public opinion in Ukraine, the West is helping the government to be much more responsive. Uh, to, towards public opinion and towards well, well, well needed and well demanded reforms because those reforms are demanded by the people. And if you go in the street, you will clearly get this message immediately. Mm -hmm. Of course, there were the, what stood behind Maidan was, of course, the, the getting rid of corruption. This, this yeah, is one of the, the main reasons. Ch changing that system there. where corruption mm -hmm. is controlled by, 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 by bodies dependent, dependable on those who are actually doing corruption. It's, it's vicious circle and it's ridiculous. We don't have independent control over public money in Ukraine. We have bodies which are supposed to control how public money is spent and those bodies are directly subordinated, appointed and fired by president, parliament or prime minister, which is uh, amazing. Mr. Rupert that is all we have time for. Thank you very much for the conversation. Thank you. Thank you. You have been watching Viewpoint on Ukraine today, where we have been joined by Oleg Rybachuk, the chairman and founder of the Centre UA NGO. Thank you for watching.